Welcome back to the Next Level Show. This show is going to be a completely different style of show due to the fact that, as you can see, it's just me. It's a solo episode. Um, my two co-hosts um, are currently not uh, here right now. One is out of town with family. Uh, my other co-host, Mike, he is starting a new job. And uh, we talked about it, and we're just going to go run one of these episodes, just me, um, just to kind of go uh, and cover a topic that you know I feel that I could cover you know, by myself, just because I t- tend to ramble uh, a lot as it is. So hopefully you enjoy this episode. A couple of reminders, if you are listening to on the audio uh, platforms, uh, such as iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or whatever uh, podcast uh, platforms are out there right now, uh, feel free to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, also, leave us a five-star rating review if you enjoy this podcast and haven't. This just helps us uh, get out there in front of more people. Uh, if you haven't already also, and you currently have been listening to our 200 over 200 plus episodes, go ahead and check us out on uh, YouTube. We also have the video wor- uh, portion of this show. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If Even if you do listen to uh, or you prefer the audio version, it just really just helps um support the show keep growing um getting better on the algorithm and just give this video a thumbs up so i'm trying to think if there's any other reminders that we have uh there's gonna be a a couple changes to the schedule we are still in the works of deciding uh usually we drop about three episodes a week but we are thinking about possibly uh dropping down to two just because there have been some career changes um not from the personal training standpoint, <clears throat> just due to actual scheduling conflicts. So since we are three co-hosts, it is uh, a little bit challenging at times to uh, keep up with the volume. Uh, and we also don't want the quality of the show to diminish. Uh, the quality is going to be the most important thing at the end of the day for you. Um, and that's our what we pride ourselves in. I'm trying to think. Um, any other reminders that I have here? Uh, <clears throat> Looks like I covered everything. But anyways, I'm excited to kind of talk, uh, jump into this topic that I have ready for today. Uh, I did a seminar a couple days ago, and I think that this uh, topic is a great one to make a full podcast. I didn't have that much time to cover uh, the full thing uh, or go into depth, really. We were, uh, we were uh, amongst other peers uh, that also had amazing topics to discuss and share with our uh, people that showed up to support our gym, our local gym. And, but I, I, I feel like this one is a standalone episode. It's, it's the beginner tips that I have for um, anyone that's in this journey that wants to start. Um, this will be a great episode actually to share with someone that you know that's been kind of on the fence, right? Um, or if you're someone that's in it, if you're in it uh, yourself and you think that, you know what, um, I've kind of gone away from these principles or I've started kind of going down a path that I'm just not enjoying myself anymore. This might actually boost that um, motivation and kind of reflect a little bit on what uh, you can be doing. So with that being said, uh, beginner tip number one. So this can be before um, you start or this can be shared to someone or this could be if you're someone that is dirt if you're actually in it right now you're within the mix of self-improvement typically why someone starts is that you know starts their fitness journeys because there's something that they're not completely happy with um, and they feel like they could be doing better whether it's uh, body composition reasons health reasons um, uh, self-confidence reasons. So there's many reasons why you may decide to self-improve, which none of them are inherently bad. No need to uh, shame or feel, uh, you know, like, oh, I, I feel I should I feel bad for feeling bad about the way I look. No, you should be completely okay to be, uh, you know, make this decision to be better and to improve areas where you feel like, you know what, I've kind of slacked off a little bit. I got to get back in shape. Um, but the biggest thing I would say for this is actually, doing this, uh, making the decision uh, from a good place. And when I say a good place is not from a place of hating yourself where you are doing this from complete disgust um, and repulsion, repulsion uh, to your, uh, about yourself, about your body, about your, you know, the way you look, um, but actually uh, from a place of loving yourself and admiring and, and, and actually acknowledging the fact that things could be better, like I said, um, and you're going to do this from a place of love from actually carrying yourself for the right reasons. Why is this so important? The, 
the main reason here is just because when you do things uh, from a good place, such as, you know, really caring about yourself, right? You're not doing it from a, co- a complete uh, place of hate. And I'll explain the other one um, in, a, in just a second, but you're actually going to make better decisions by default. You're, you're going to want to uh, self-improve and make decisions that are going to actually uh, make the body healthier versus strictly going on a place of hate where you may do stuff that may be punishing to the body, where you might be hurting the body in the long run. Um, and some examples of this um, is the, from a place of hate, right? Is is when you you go on a really radical diet where you are starving yourself um, because you are so fixated on losing weight. Um, a lot of people fall into this trap, actually. It's, it's, it's quite common. I think it's a really important point to, to, to emphasize is the problem with this is that you can only hate yourself so long and put yourself through that punishment, whether it's through food, whether it's through exercise. You can go so far and actually get tremendous results. There's people that do this and initiate their, their journey uh, uh, with this mentality. The problem is, is once you get to a point where you are burnt out, you are completely fried and you are not feeling great. You're feeling lethargic. You feel like shit. You, you feel like, you know, this whole thing, you're just suffering the whole way through, right? Uh, It's going to get to a point where you're just going to say, F this man. Like I, I can't, it's not even worth it anymore. And you, I, or it's going to cause you to have a relationship where, you know, you know what, like screw the diet. I'm just going to go to the doctor and schedule an appointment and, and get a radical procedure done on my body, whatever that is. Um, because this sucks being working out and, and dieting. I, that's my association is with restriction, punishment in the gym, pain all the time. Um, when, when you do this in the, with the right mindset, and I say the right mindset, because I think there's a right and wrong here is the right mindset is like, you know what? I acknowledge I've been like letting myself go. I haven't been taking care of myself or making myself a priority. Um, I know I only have one body and I want to make sure that the, the life that I do live is a high quality life. And I'm going to do this from a place of uh, loving myself and respecting myself. And what does that look like? Um, easy example. If you don't know, like you're thinking like, how the hell do I even do that to myself is if you have a loved one, let's say it's your significant other, it's a, it's your child, it's uh, someone that you really hold dear and they come to you and they tell you like, man, I, I just hate myself. I'm just disgusting. I'm a loser. I'm a piece of, of a POS. You're going to be like, no, like, I don't view you like that. I, I love you very much. And honestly, like, I want to see you live a better quality of life. I want to see you get healthier. I want for you, I want you to experience, experience, uh, what is like to be at the best you can be. And you want to see that person really just uh, uh, level up, you know, and we always have the, sh- the saying on the show, the next level, uh, reach that next level of improvement and of uh, status, um, that you are just a better version that you uh, than you were before. So um, I think that if you do it from that approach, you're going to be like, I'm going to eat a certain way that's going to challenge me. It's going to fix my habits. I'm going to start uh, making some improvements to my uh, active lifestyle. I'm going to start working out consistently and I'm going to work out in a way that makes me, my, my body feel good. I'm going to start eating in a way that's going to be nourishing my body. Um, because by default, if you are healthier, fundamentally, you are, uh, your body will follow the aesthetics, the, 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 the body composition typically will follow. Um, this process, the problem that a lot of people run into actually is, is that it takes longer, right? I'm not going to tell you that it, it's, it's very, it's a, it's a one and done just because you do it this way. Uh, you're going to get there necessarily faster, which man, I'll even argue, um, even though you think you got to the other uh, place faster by, you know, doing all the radical uh, procedures and, or, um, the processes, I guess, like dieting and the exercise protocols that you may have chosen that are very high intensity and, uh, and rough on you, you, the sustainability piece, we'll get into that later, but you actually, it will actually probably take you longer because you'll be constantly uh, yo-yo, yo-yoing back and forth, uh, from, you know, getting some results, uh, kind of falling back and losing that and regaining some of the weight and maybe kind of, maybe an injury happens. So if you do this the right way, actually, it may be, it may seem slower, 
but in the long run, it actually will be a lot faster because you'll get there. You'll actually have sustainable uh, results and you'll, you'll actually feel a lot better about yourself mentally. Um, the, the reason I think is a lot of it's self-improvement is not only just the physical, but it's your mindset, uh, which we have a lot of episodes. We talk about like different things when it comes to fitness that tie into that mentality. Um, but when I talk about slow progress uh, and slow uh, progressions within your fitness journey, I think that it's a perfect segue to the next point, which is understanding that this is a marathon, not a sprint. You want to take a very gradual approach to this health and fitness thing. Like I said, this avoids burnout, maybe adopting changes that aren't sustainable long term whether with diet or training. And uh, main thing to focus on here is the simplicity. You want to keep it simple. Um, to the slow and not a marathon uh, example, it's, 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 it's what I'm saying is exactly literally like if you look at a long distance runner, they are not, um, they know they have 20 plus miles to run. Um, you know that you're not going to actually just go gung ho right out the gates in a full blown sprint, um, knowing you're going to burn out by like mile two and you have like a bunch of other miles to go, you're going to take a nice gradual approach, have a good pace. You want to make sure that it's challenging. You're pushing yourself, but you're setting a nice pace for the rest of the race to be able to finish, to get to the end result, uh, which can be insert X goal that you're trying to accomplish. Um, I think that's going to be like a, a very big point here. Um, when it comes to, uh, to avoid the burnout, like I said, you don't want to come out gung ho, you know, throwing the whole kitchen sink at the situation. You want to start slowly adopting, uh, one or two lifestyle changes at a time that are going to allow you to instill new habits within yourself that will start to be, uh, come second nature. Simple as when you wake up, you go brush your teeth in the morning. Typically that's a habit that you were taught at a very young age, hopefully, it's it, you don't think about it. You don't have to psych yourself into do it. It's just part of your routine. You brush your teeth a couple times a day. Um, you get up. You do. You do. You go grab your coffee. Whatever the case may be, you kind of have a, a, a ritual within your day. Um, and you want fitness and, and this lifestyle to kind of in, fall into that and 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 not it be this. I was fit once and I had my you know I was on fitness and then I lost it. Like no, we want to keep that. Uh, nice and we want to merge it nice and gradually and mend it where it actually falls into place uh, nicely. So pick my my advice there is just picking on like you know a couple of things at a time to make adjustments. One to three things you want to whether whether it's um, from the exercise component, from a nutrition component, um, and from just a, a daily lifestyle thing. I would say max um, and start write them down. Do whatever you got to do to kind of make sure you're focused. And do something that's challenging that makes you have to work a little bit, but not it's not overwhelming. Like I wouldn't say someone starting out that's working out zero days to go and start working out, uh, you know, five to six times a day. You know, I would say, hey, start out with two to three. That that would be even though you feel like you could do five, start with two to three and kind of stay consistent with that. And you may feel like, you know what, I like doing this. You know, I can do this for forever. Um, and you, or eventually you get two to three, you know what, I'm finally ready. I can finally add a fourth day or a fifth day, you know, and then you start kind of gradually building there. You don't need much. Same thing with nutrition. If you're someone that doesn't drink any water and you, uh, one improvement that you can make is start kind of replacing maybe some of that, those sugary beverages that you have with a couple bottles of water. You are thus moving the needle forward and eliciting, uh, the perfect amount of change for where you are currently at. Um, the, these will vary from person to person, but the, the, the concept is the same. Keep it simple. This should not be frustrating or overwhelming. If it is, you are then you need to reassess what you're doing and uh, make those uh, adequate changes. That way you don't experience, you know, burnouts or wanting to quit. Um, another key component I want to highlight here, this is like a little side note, shout out to Jordan Syed for this one. Um, I heard other coaches say this, but I think I heard it from him first. You can't fuck this up. And um, this whole fitness thing, you really can't. The, um, you can mess up and quote unquote miss days and, and miss your diet and uh, whatever, feel like you uh, fell off. But as long as you get back up and you get back on it, 
no harm done. You are completely fine. Um, this fitness thing, if you look at it from a, a, a forever thing, a forever mindset, you then eliminate that stress off your mind that, you know, there is a, you're messing up at any given point. You're not going to be perfect. Don't expect yourself to be. Uh, kill that unrealistic expectation and you will be a lot more happy with uh, yourself and actually enjoy this thing. Um, I kind of covered a little bit on, you know, focusing on one thing at a time. Um, another thing I would say when it comes to this um, is with, with exercise, I know that I was just talking to a client that has been, you know, he, you know, flat out tells me he doesn't like uh, exercising. And it was even hard for him to sign up with me because just the thought of paying someone to exercise was kind of like mind boggling. This is an older gentleman, but his wife kind of wanted him to uh, do something which he needs it. I mean, the guy uh, deals with some pain here and there. And we started him very bare minimum of two times a week for uh, just 30 minutes a session, man. Like, um, just to, so you, it's, you're in and out, you're, you're doing something. And as a result, the guy feels better, but, um, stuff that I would tell him to do outside, excuse me, is not expecting to start working out a bunch when I'm not with him. I'm not expecting this guy to go and sign up at a gym and, uh, start executing a full blown program. I told him if possible, if he can, Sorry if you guys hear my my dog yelling her head off. She probably sees a cat or something outside. Um, but I told them like little things that you can actually be doing is is focusing on adding maybe some activity to your current routine. Wow, she's really losing her mind right now. Um, is adding already physical activity to your current routine, which can come from a form of, um, you know, if you already you you everyone eats right. And um, you're going to want to go ahead and add, let's say, after your lunch at work, you have about 15 minutes to kill. Add a short 10 minute walk to that current routine. That's going to actually uh, help, um, you know, get some activity latched on to your current habits that are already pre existing. Um, and you won't be thinking about it as like, I'm doing this, uh, this drive to the gym and adding this full blown routine. You're doing just a simple, subtle tweak. Um, and it shows benefits. You're going to probably be more consistent. You can, you can do this in any, this, this form can be very varied from person to person. Apologize once again for the dog acting like a maniac. I don't want to go out there and, and stop the show. But basically, um, yeah, about, this can be very flexible. This can be someone that if you wake up every morning, you do a couple mobility stretches first thing. Um, every, every time after, let's say, brushing your teeth or while you're having your coffee, whatever that may be, like do it. I would, it's, there's, it's called habit stacking. And I think that it's very simple, very applicable. You can add this to anything and make this customized to your lifestyle, which is the most important thing. You got to make it work. If that makes sense. Um, also guys, I'll highlight if any questions you're watching this on YouTube, drop a comment. If you have any uh, questions, if you're listening to an audio version, shoot me a message at John Alva fitness, um, or any of the guys at the next level show, I'll, we'll have the links to the, uh, pod, uh, to social media platforms here and, or through a review comment. Um, but yeah, adding these, uh, adding physical activity to your current existing routine is going to be super, super important. This just allows you to, um, start building habits and making it like, like I said, reiterate lifestyle. Um, another point that I want to cover is, is super important as to why uh, beginner tips and stuff to keep in mind while you're going through this is prioritizing resistance training rather than just cardio. Um, I know that for the longest time, medical doctors and uh, medical professionals, sorry, um, would you recommend, you know, like 30 to 60 minutes of uh, of exercise and in a, in a form and, and basically they were covering is some type of cardio, you know, um, they wanted you to, uh, you know, maybe go walking or jogging or cycling or something. And the reason why they did this for the longest time, obviously studies hadn't really uh, been co uh, consistent with showing uh, the benefits of resistance training. But they, it was also a way that a lot of medical professionals would, you know, it's okay to prescribe this because the likelihood of injury is a lot less for some people. So they think, um, and it's just a safe cap out of just saying, hey, like just go move and go walk. And that's more than enough. And sure, is, is something better than nothing? Absolutely. But 
uh, we have now shown time and time again that the, the, the impact that resistance training and traditional strength training does for a person, it is huge. It, uh, it makes a huge difference in the sense of, um, uh, for especially as people age, this thing's going to be huge. It's going to be a point where you can combat a lot of uh, the lead causing of mortality and a lot of, a lot of diseases that come as we age, whether that's diabetes, um, that can combat, you know, being more efficient with insulin. Um, it can be with any bone, um, bone diseases that, you know, start to come about, you know, as, you know, with uh, maybe that's your genetic predisposition. This can postpone it. A lot of mental stuff too. There's a neurological uh, piece to this that, uh, a cognitive piece to this, I'm sorry, that helps, you know, improve those functions and those signals to the brain through uh, uh, resistance training because there's a, a high skill component to these movements. Whether it's a basic squat or a simple press or a type of pulling, there is something going on in the brain where it's different when you're just walking and your brain's not really activated and firing. You're kind of just doing it second nature versus when you have a load and you're moving through space, uh, moving your body through space, there is a mental component there. There is a challenge. There's a skill. That's why people hire trainers, because sometimes if you have zero clue on this and you don't have the, um, the discipline to kind of go on your own to teach yourself these things, because let's be honest, if you don't know how to do something and you're sucking at it, some people don't like that. So they hire someone that feel they feel comfortable and trust, which is completely okay. I wish I had money when I was younger, when I was learning, it would have saved me probably a lot of injuries and tears and tweaks. But, um, but yeah, it, there's a skill component and this is very valuable. Another reason is because when it comes to re recomposition, if you're someone that's trying to lose weight and look better naked, I always hi I highlight this because I have no shame in saying it, man. Like a lot of people went men and women want to look better and feel comfortable, um, without clothes with their clothes on. Um, and that's a kind of a main driver for a lot of people working out. Resistance training does this better than no other. Combining it with obviously proper nutrition, you have a recipe for success. Um, cardio alone can get you to lose the weight, absolutely, which is a, a safe way for people to go. The problem is that it doesn't really uh, make a big difference in the way you look. Um, when people imagine transformation or looking better, they actually envision, you know, maybe getting more sculpted, looking tighter, uh, slimming certain areas down. And weights is a form of just molding the body, if you will. And that's something that it will do that cardio just can't. Um, another reason I highlight this is like, if you're someone that's super heavy on cardio, if you like it, sure, that's fine. But if you are someone uh, that eat already eats low calories and, and do excessive amounts of cardio, this can be a recipe just to struggle back and forth with keeping the weight, um, keeping a healthy weight and keeping it off easy, right? Once you've already lost all this weight and you've put yourself through the ringer, the worst thing is to see is that see the uh, your progress start to diminish when your efforts do. And the good thing about a resistance training that it's almost like you're investing in the long term uh, results, and this can be uh, for this can lead to long term success with your body. You will uh, fundamentally have a um, a much faster metabolism as a from the result of putting on more lean tissue. Uh, resistance training compared to cardio is actually pro uh, tissue, um, which that more expensive, uh, valuable tissue, which is your muscle, requires more energy to sustain. As a result, you are then burning more calories on a sit still. And this is something that we've covered in many episodes. Uh, but I think it's super important to highlight if you're someone that's in this already, but are maybe making these mistakes, um, you're noticing this where shit, I eat anything over 1200 calories, I instantly start to gain weight. Um, I, all I do is run an hour a day. I barely lift weights or don't at all. You want to start actually adding this component into your routine. And this makes a massive difference. Um, you'll also thank yourself uh, later down the road because your clothes fits nicely. It sits where it wants to versus just becoming a uh, smaller version of the same person, uh, which we in, in the fitness world call it skinny fat. You know, you lost the weight, you're smaller by weight, but your body looks about the same. You're still soft. And um, well, Resistance training will get you that toned look for my ladies and it look, you make you look nice and muscular and chiseled for my men. Um, these are the main, uh, these are just a couple of the main points and beginner tips. And I don't even, uh, I should not even label this beginner tips. These are just uh, basic fitness tips that are, are good for beginners, but they're also good to, as, as a refresher uh, for anyone that's going through this process right now. 
These are just valuable things that even myself and the guys on this show, we have to revisit from time to time to understand um, our relationship with ourselves when we're going through this, why we're doing something is very important. Um, Understanding that we're no exception to the rule. And even if you feel like you have been doing this long time, a long time, you don't need, you still want to follow these basic principles of adding small uh, progressive changes to your current life to um, be able to sustain your uh, new look or the improvements that you want to make. Um, I always say, man, like if you're going to bust your ass and go through it, make it last, make it, make it worthwhile, make it so you don't, once you stop whatever you're doing, it just goes away very fast. I was an example that I like to use is that I was a competitor at one point. I did one uh, one show and one show alone, but I went very well. I got my body to a place where I was very lean. The greatest part is that the, the issue that a lot of competitors, sorry, have is that they get there, they lose their progress very, very quickly. They bounce back is what I'm saying. Um, I was lucky enough that I gradually got into this condition and this shape that little by little, my, 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 my body started to fill out again, but it was a nice, uh, good. It was packing on size on the, on the rebound. I was coming out of it and, and being able to add, get the benefit of that, that curve. And if you do this properly, you'll go through cycles within your life, certain principles. I didn't really cover in like the, the weight loss and, and, and muscle gain component. Uh, but these are just some basic things um, as to why it's important to take a more methodical approach to your health and fitness. Because um, if you do it right and sustainable, you won't have to be uh, just going back and forth with different programs and different diets and thinking nothing works and spinning your wheels even maybe you're just someone that's relatively healthy but you look the same all the time and you want to see some change in progress with your uh with your body or with some performance numbers or strength numbers um but you know you keep flip-flopping back and forth that's i think i should have added that tip don't be a flip-flopper um kind of stay consistent with something pick a regimen or pick a routine in a uh eating protocol that's realistic and that you can stick to at least for, I would say, what, like 10 to 16 weeks, uh, 10 on the short end, 16 weeks on average, and then reassess um, what your programming looks like. And uh, because a lot of people think that they have to be switching every week, which is not the case, you can make some adjustments throughout the way, of course, but for the base and the skeleton of your program should be pretty consistent. You don't wanna be doing a bunch of radical changes because then you'll never be able to see what actually works and what doesn't. So um, if you, I'll even leave this out, this, this kind of like a little recap. First thing, decide why you're doing this, the self-improvement journey, do this for the right reasons, do it at a place of love. And if you, versus a place of hate, if you do this, you'll make better choices and actually uh, enjoy it, the process a lot more because your mindset's in the right place. Understand that this is a slow uh, thing. Do not, um, do not, uh, try to sprint and go all out. Uh, this is going to avoid uh, the burnouts, not sustainable uh, uh, changes and adjustments and keep it simple. Focus on one habit at a time. Um, you know, add, uh, add one or two adjustments to your exercise regimen, eating protocol and uh, less lifestyle um, at a time to see that consistent trend and building uh, habits on top of each other. Um, the, the other thing, like I said, we just talked about prioritizing strength training in your routine, whether it's uh, performance, cosmetic, or both. Um, prioritizing strength training is just going to be uh, more optimal than just cardio alone. And the last thing I'll say, just real quick, if you need help, reach out to someone, you know, reach out to a local personal trainer. If you want someone to work with you in person, and maybe you're too far from the next level show host, um, reach out to someone. It does. It's, it is worth the investment, at least for a few months. You know, it, it's definitely something that will help you. It's an investment on your body and in some knowledge that you can take forever. Obviously bet a good coach out. If you also want some online guidance, hire someone that you can trust and they don't live in your area. You know, even as such as ourselves, you can send us a message and DM us um, and inquire about our coaching services because that's also something that we do offer. Now, just to wrap this up, I hope you guys actually enjoyed this. I'm not going to be doing a dad joke because um, I'm not as gifted as Gabe and Mike on this one. So sorry. Um, I know that's probably disappointing for some of you or a relief for some of you, right? <laughs> um, so 
just to um, last couple things is closing thoughts. Guys, this is a, a wonderful thing to be able to do. It's a privilege to be able to move your body and do something about it. If you're not happy with something, the fact that you have an able body is a blessing. Don't take it for granted. Those are just words that I know that the guys back me up on this. It's a hundred percent true. Now I will say this. Um, if any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us at any time, leave us a comment. We're always welcome to answer questions or topic ideas that you may have for us to put on the show. We always were open-minded to do so for you guys and keep bringing you valuable content. If this like some stuff really stuck out to you, screenshot it, share it on your story on Instagram, tag the guys and myself, um, and let us know. And we can give you a personal thank you as well as uh, share this episode and like this video, send it to somebody that may need to hear this type of message that can, can save them from making silly mistakes um, or get them started. Simple as that. And with that being said, we'll wrap this up. Uh, check us out on the Instagram pages at the next level show. My personal page is at John Alva fitness, my guys, my co-hosts, um, you can find them uh, Gabe. He's at prime and glory and Mr. Mike. He's at Mike Nellis PT till the next one.